with this guy, I will have to order XT60 to, oh wait, no. I do want to, to... oh, okay. It looks like it should fit. What? Or you just gotta be manly with it. Oh, nope. Please set the panel directly in sunlight. Okay, so, esto es muy interesante. Let's open this thing up all the way. Oh boy, this is awesome. So I have a unique problem where I don't have a actual normal tripod for my phone, except for this little thing. And it's uh, as high as it goes right now. <laughs> and this is kind of a big product. So I figured I'd film it here on my living room. But this is the Anchor 625 100 watt solar panel for powerhouse and handheld devices. This is truly exciting because with this, you get to harvest the power of the sun. Now this video is being filmed on my 15 Pro Max and I'm going to be, and uh, I'll then transfer it to my computer and edit it in Premiere. But anyways, it's filmed on my 15 Pro Max completely. So it's 100 watts. There's the dimensions folded, unfolded. It weighs about 11 pounds. And the USB-C port can do five volts, three amps. The USB-A port can do five volts, 2.4 amps. So it does up to 26.5 volts. It'll do 3.77 amps. Model is A2431. And then there's the rest of the information about Anchor. And let's get to the exciting part of unboxing it. Oh, I need a knife. Hey, can you hand me your box cutter? All right, all right, all right, all right. This is my first Anchor solar panel in a very long time. My only other Anchor solar panel was like a little phone one, I think. I don't even know 100% anymore. If this isn't my first one, then I had forgotten. I don't think I don't think I've ever had an Anchor solar panel, but so it's like a briefcase. You know, it's it's a little bit of a thick thing because it's got a lot of moving parts to it. So you've got a compartment here, compartment there, and then a, it's like a briefcase. It folds up, and then there's that. So let, let's open up the briefcase part of, or I'm sorry, the uh, storage part of it. Okay, so we have a XT60 to XT60. This is gonna be how you get 100 watts. You got this boy, so this will connect up to my Anchor 522 that I have over there. And uh, I believe it'll also connect to my original powerhouse. We'll see. So I also have an Anchor powerhouse to 800 and it uses Anderson. So I bought this a while back. I will pull the link directly from my orders if you guys want it, but I just opened this today for the first time and it's got the standard connectors for solar, MT4, I believe. And then it's got Anderson. It's got the big old giant plug. It's got the smaller plug and then it's got the XT60. So I believe I'm gonna use this guy just because I have so many unique powerhouses to charge up, which I'm gonna show you that here in a moment once I finish unboxing this. So, since I'm gonna use my own connector, I'll just put that back in there so I don't lose it, because Lord knows I will. And then in here, we've got the actual thing. Oh, so it's like a mesh, breathable mesh, and it's a little bit see-through. And then here you've got the USB-A port to charge up a phone. So there's the USB-A right here. Here's the USB-C that can do five volts, three amps for 15 watts. And then there's the XT60, which can do 100 watts. Oh! Okay, so I was wrong. This cable's actually useless to me on this uh, solar panel. So I'm gonna need to buy an XT60 to Anderson, apparently. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. So I lied, I'll be getting that right back out. It just plugs right into here. And then it's a nice long cable, probably about six feet maybe. And then that goes into your powerhouse. So I've got a little bit of time, I'm going to bring my phone outside and make a video after I show you my powerhouses. So this guy is going to use that barrel plug in the back to get the solar input. This powerhouse 434 watt hour, 160 watt. It also uses the big old plug there for solar input. With this guy, I will have to order XT60 to, oh wait, no. Okay. So I actually can use the barrel plug as well. I do want to test. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So never mind. I, I still do want to order one to Anderson in case I get something else that charges via Anderson. But I was using this last night to power up my, uh, it's like a fan, but it like filters air. I forget what it's called. 
But then would this connect to this? Oh, no! It doesn't connect to that. Or you have to like, no. I'm not sure what that is then. Okay, so I wonder if it's the smaller plug on this, this thing right here. No. What the heck is that? It looks like it should fit. What? Or you just gotta be manly with it. Oh, nope. Okay, so we won't be using that today. This charge tech thing that I've had for a while, it also uses the barrel plug, but it's not gonna be that one. I'll bet you it's gonna be that smaller one. Yeah, okay. So with this MT4 to uh, all these different connectors, it's got the right plug on it. And then this all powers unit that I just got, it also is probably gonna use that smaller one. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so it's interesting that it, you know, I, I'm gonna have to buy some XT60 to uh, this smaller plug here and some XT60 to Anderson, but it's okay. And then this thing that I used last night, I actually kept to my thing that I was talking about, the fan that like filters the air and um, a purifier. And I uh, had this thing feeding into this thing because this has 60 watts of input and this has 60 watts of output. So I kept this thing going for the entire night. And when I woke up, this thing was at 11%. It went from 100 to 11, and this thing is completely dead. So this was at 100. So I kept my purifier going all last night. It was drawing 55 watts from this thing, and this thing was supplying 60. So until this thing died, which lasted three hours, then it ran on the battery inside here. Anyway, so that's why having PD input is such a huge thing. All right, let's go outside and uh, have some fun. All right, so we got the nice 90 degree sun. Found a little bit of shade right here to kind of sit and store things while I walked back and forth inside. So we're gonna set this panel up. Oh, it's Velcroed, okay. That is some solid Velcro. What is this? Oh, that's a stand, okay. Some more information there, Anchor 65. Please set the panel directly in sunlight. Okay, so. Esto es muy interesante. It's done yum. Ah, uh, all right. Let's open this thing up all the way. Oh, oh boy. This is awesome. Uh, I gotta stop filming and set this up. All right, so I got it set up and I found the sweet spot. You wanna get that little dot, the blue one for the shadow to go into the little red circle. Which it's not perfect, but it's close to it. I should have grabbed the cables out before I mistakes were made. All right, so I set it up and then I realized, oh crap, I gotta plug the cable in that I just grabbed out. So I had to do it again. So, <laughs> all right, let's see if this Anchor 548 can receive any power from this thing. So nothing on the screen. All right, let's just verify everything's fine and good by using this little thing here. All right, and now we'll plug it into the back of this unit and see if it... Okay, so right away, instantly, it's uh, bringing in 79 watts right now. It says that 79 watts, it's gonna take three hours to fully charge. I think it's super cool. So my fan that draws 50 watts, if I've got, you know, this much solar coming in, I'm actually putting in an extra, you know, 20 watts while this thing is powering my fan, which is great. Oh, 80 watts there. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but I can't see my screen on my phone right now. It's so bright. Okay, so we're drawing, you know, and this isn't as bright as it could be. You know, it's only 1157 and uh, 84 degrees. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Now, I've never connected solar to this guy because I've never had an Anderson, but now that I know that I don't, I didn't even pay attention to that port next to it. So let's plug that in and look at that. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so this is the first time this thing's ever charged via solar, uh, as well as this one, but this one's new. I just got this one. I've had this one for three or four years now. This has a massive 777 watt hour battery and it can take two power delivery inputs for uh, 60 watts each port, 120 watts max. 
So I have used this during some power outages and it has been absolutely amazing. So we're getting 79 watts from the sun right now. So when this Anchor 548 initially came out, Anchor actually suggested the EcoFlow panel because it supplied the right amount of voltage that this thing needed. But I was hoping that maybe like this was a newer panel than when this was released. I know there's a newer version of this unit that's like silver. This one's the original one that came out day one that I bought on Amazon. And uh, maybe that one can work, but that's very disappointing because that means I still gotta use my EcoFlow panel to charge up this thing via solar. But considering this is an anchor panel, anchor, 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 I figured let's just keep it all anchor. I should have said this earlier, but this solar panel was provided to me by Anchor, no money exchange hands. They're not paying me, I'm not paying them. They just sent it to me for free in exchange for you know, my thoughts on it. So that's pretty awesome. I'm thankful to have that opportunity. Being able to charge all three of these with it would have been amazing. But hey, there's ants everywhere. I'm just realizing that I'm, I have ants crawling on my butt. Ah! <laughs> that's just so exciting to me. Oh, I just love that so much. I could harvest all the energy from the sun and three hours. I could set this thing up on my balcony and uh, well, my balcony is, the sun is on this side and my balcony is on the other side. So, you know, if my balcony was on this side, I could set this outside for three hours, run the cable inside and this thing would be fully charged and then it would power my fan the whole night and I would never have to pay to have my, you know, fan run all night long. I mean, 55 watts for, I don't know, the eight hours a night that it runs, and the eight to 10 hours, somewhere around there. I mean, being able to do it for free and then charge this thing back up and with the sun. Obviously it's at 66%. If this was completely dead, it would take longer. And this little guy is almost completely dead and it's gonna take 2.9 hours. But the battery in here is 299 watt hours. This is 777. So this is literally a little over a double, like double and a half-ish maybe. 777 minus 299. I mean, that's three, 400, 470. Yeah, so that's a chunk of watt hours of that difference between these two units. This is an old unit. This has been out for a while. It does use the older technology. So this one, you know, I've only discharged it and charged it, you know, several times, probably less than 10. So it'll go for 500 cycles that way. This one will go thousands and still beyond that. So it's, you know, much better technology. But I mean, I'm, I am thankful to have this one because this thing has come in handy during power outages and I definitely don't use it every single day. Like last night, also I was preparing for this video and I also try to occasionally drain them and then charge them back up so they're not just sitting full for years and never being touched. I don't do any outdoor activities because I'm kind of terrified of spiders and snakes and I don't really do the outdoors. But if I did, this things would be even more freaking fantastic than they are now. It's interesting, like, it's like, I almost want to build like a piece of wood and attach it because like it's not this side super droopy because there's not a support here like see I can hold it up now and then so this little thing isn't being truly accurate here because with this this side drooping down this is getting more solar than the sides are so if I put this in something or use these like little hooks and strapped it to something solid that I could use like a, a stick or something to prop it up, then uh, I would get more, I would utilize this panel to 100% efficiency that, that it's capable of. Right now with its current state, you know. Okay, so I moved it a little bit and this is what I was talking about. So if I make it like level, then I lose the perfect circle there. But if I let the middle droop down, it's now perfect in the middle there. But that side, there's no way to really get this side any lower because this is a pretty stiff piece here. But with a little bit of material and a trip to the you know hardware store, I could build something to make this a perfect level thing and get all of the solar that it's capable of. Right now we're doing 80 watts, which is fantastic. And look, we've already gained some percentage. That's... <laughs> Oh man, that's just super freaking exciting. I'm just absolutely tickled, tickled. This is, this is amazing. Thank you Anchor for sending me out the solar panel. I paid for this and I paid for this. This was sent to me uh, years ago, three or four years ago for free. I just want to be fully transparent. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This is What Would Josh Do? And I am out.
I have to freaking go to work. Okay, this is the very end of the video, and I was packing it up to go back inside and head to work. And I've got to say, that is so freaking convenient. Literally takes seconds to fold it up, put the cables in there, zip it back up, and have this little small thing stashed in a corner somewhere of your RV or your van that you're living out of or car or, you know, like whatever, wherever you have this thing. So that is super convenient. It's just ready to go. Oh my gosh, that was, that was so fast. That's what she said.